Voila! I got the rock! <laughs> D! What on earth are you wearing? Stalwart! Harrisville! Fifty percent of the Halloween costumes. This is good, no? Uh, I still question if you are adopted in our family. Now remember, tomorrow you must gas up the copter, for we will be flying to the private airport, and taking the jet to Canada, and after that, back home to France. Bonsoir. Capos? <laughs> In the cape. Yep, can't forget about the cape. Hey, you guys see Danny? Oh, you didn't hear? He's sick. He won't be coming on the trip. Where'd he go? Yes, I got me a set. I don't know why they won't fix the boy teeth. My boy look like a little donkey. Yes, let me fix him teeth, man. What? I want that. Box foot. I said something just run past me. Me have a pest control, me this. Look like one big red rat. Danny, what happened to you? Me sick. 102 degree temperature. Can't go on the trip. That stinks. Ew, what's that? Lemongrass tea? It's an old time Jamaican remedy. Well, if you're not going, I'm not going. No, no, Aki. You go enjoy yourself. No sense the boat of you miss out. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm sure you won't be missing out on anything. It'll probably be a big snooze fest. Feel better, Aki. Let you throw it. Boy. I'm changing mind quickie. Okay, we have all our students accounted for. No one at all. Uh, sir, Isaac's not here. Oh, to the floor, I checked him out. Shalom, y'all. I'm right here. <laughs> uh, okay, enough of the shenanigans, you two. To steal? Let's roll. Hey, Pepe, how was your tryout for the Miss America pageant, hmm? What is she talking about? The jacket is girly jacket, wee oui, wee. Oui. I beg to differ. This is gender neutral. I got this from the fashion district of Paris. Well, Monsieur, you should return it to the fashion district of Paris and get back your money. <laughs> <laughs> he say my fashion sense is holy. Ugh. Enough of your laughter. We must get going. We can't miss the flight to Canada. Wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. I set the wheels on the bus round and round, all through the town. Come on, the wheels on the bus.
So Kyle, have you had a chance to check out the scriptures I gave you? Yeah, I got to visit my brother at the prison last week. I was even able to share some of the good news with him. But he was telling me the Bible is just a whole bunch of fairy tales. Really? Is that so? Tell me something. Have you heard of the parable of the sower? No, I don't think so. In the book of Luke chapter 8, we read about a sower who went out to sow seed. Now some of the seed fell on the wayside, some fell on the rock, some fell among thorns, and some of the seed fell on good ground. Now some of the seed that fell by the wayside, well, it was trodden down, and the birds of the Shemaim devoured it. And others fell on the rock. And when it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. And others fell among the thorns. and the thorns grew up with it. And choked it. And others fell on the good soil and grew up and yielded a crop a hundredfold. So what's the meaning of this parable? It's funny you ask. That's the same question that the disciples asked Yahushua. And guess what he told them? To you it has been given to know the secrets of the reign of Elohim, but to the rest in parables, that seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not understand. The seed represents the word of Yahuwah, and those by the wayside are the ones who hear. But then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts. Lest having believed, they should be saved. And those on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, who believe for a while, but in a time of trial, fall away. And that which fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with worries, and riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to perfection. And that which falls on the good soil are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, retain it and bear fruit with endurance. Satan's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. He will use those closest to us to bring doubt and disbelief. But I believe that the word that's been planted in you was planted on good soil, Kyle. And in time, that fruit will manifest in your life. Wow! Thanks, Isaac. And how about you? Is your life bearing any fruit? Uh, Isaac? Who are you talking to? Whoa, that doesn't sound good. Something is wrong. This copter is failing. We need to lighten the load. Oh, mon dieu. This is not necessity. This is not necessity. This is not. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I would never throw you away, mon ami, Bobby. This is not necessity. 
Why is this fuel showing empty? I told you to get up the cup here. What were you doing last night? First, let me help out the mower of the lawn. I don't wanna cut the grass. What? What is so funny? Gee, <laughs> remember to gas up the captain. Are you listening, man? Eh, mon dieu, clean up this mess. Oops. There is no choice. We have to jump. This is all you're doing, you imbecile. Well, if we look on the bright side, at least we get to go. To the sky diving? You imbecile! I give you one simple job, and this is what you do. Please tell me you have the small silver box. Huh? Silver box? What a silver box? The one that has the diamond inside of it? Don't you remember I showed it to you last night? And I got the air ones, but I still get dunked on the match. One, you crack me up. <laughs> hey, Gee, whatever you do, don't let this box out of your sight. You hear me, man? Clean up this place. It looks like a pigsty. Oops. You find me that diamond. Alright, kids, this is our last restroom break. You'll soon be at the Crystal Chalet Resort. And now, finally, have some peace and quiet. Be back at the bus in 10 minutes. Hey Miguel, heads up! Okay, I say. It's on now. Huh? What's that? Oh, oh, Pepe is going to kill me. Bowser, my favorite cousin in the world. No, 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 no. Don't tell me that. Just tell me you found it. Well, yes. Oh boy, Pepe has finally lost it. Gee, tell me, what is this I made in this? A pretty angel. Correct. Who am I? My cousin, Pepe. Correct. Oh, I like this game. And I? I am no angel. In fact, I can be your worst nightmare. Now tell me, where is the diamond? I kid, I can't talk it. Kid, what kid? They are heading for the Crystal Chalet. We must get back the diamond. Alright kids, here we are. 
You'll be getting your room assignments, and we will meet back at the... Excusez-moi, mon vieux. Oh, I love that hat. Very chic. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. The name is Marcel Le Fleur. Julie Connoisseur. It's been brought to my attention that one of your pupils may have inadvertently picked up a parcel, a petite silver box, at your last stop, yes? Now, did any of you pick up something that didn't belong to you at the rest stop? Well, Mr. Marcel, seems that you must be mistaken. Must be somebody else. These are uh, very exemplary students. He's wearing a goalie jacket. What is this you are saying? This is not a goalie jacket. It is from the fashion district of Paris. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Let me regain my composure. <laughs> My apologies, pardon, pardon. <laughs> well, I'm sure there are fine people, yes. Uh, bonsoir, merci beaucoup. That man right there? He ain't playing with the full deck. Why was he sweating us? I don't know. Hey! What's up, little brother? Uh, hi. I don't know about you, but I would rather be shooting hoops than messing round on these slopes. Brothers have no business messing with all this snow and ice, know what I'm saying? Alright, alright. Let me break it down for you. Your Spanish buddy over there has a small silver box that belongs to me and my friend. It's in his backpack. I got 500 big ones for you if you go in that bag and get me that box. You in? Hmm? I didn't catch your name, sir. The name is Bentley. Oh, like the car. Yes, that's a nice car. Expensive. Costs lots of money. You know what doesn't cost money? True friendship. A friend loves at all times. Some people can be bought off. I'm not one of them. Whoa! I didn't mean to offend you, little brother. We still cool, right? You keep calling me brother. Because we both have the same skin color? Let me break down something for you, Mr. Bentley. The Messiah said in Matthew and Matit Yahoo, chapter 12, verse 50, For whoever does the will of my father, who is in the Shemaim, is my brother and sister and mother. Do you know what the will of the father is? No, but I have a feeling you're going to tell me. In the book of Psalms, we Hebrews call it Sefer Tehillim. In chapter 40, verse 8, King David says this, I have delighted to do your will, O my Elohim, and your Torah is within my inward parts. The Torah is the Father's will for all humanity. To Torah? What is that? The Torah is the first five books of the Bible, Mr. Bentley, and it consists of the Father's instructions, not only for us Hebrews, but for all humanity. Let me ask you something. Did you know that those hot dogs on your train have pork in them? Yeah, so? Well, if you read the Torah, you would know that pork is not even considered a food. And if you continue to consume it, it will have both physical and spiritual consequences. Uh, uh, looks like it was love at first sight for Miss Piggy. Now, I'll ask my friend about that box. And if he has it, well, you and your boss will get it back. But I'll tell you this. The salvation that is found in the pages of the Bible, the salvation found in Yahushua the Messiah, is a lot more valuable than whatever you got in that box. Shalom, Mr. Benson. Hey, Holmes. Can't wait to hit those slopes tomorrow. Miguel, something strange just happened. This guy approached me out of nowhere, and he said you have some box that belongs to him and his boss. I think he might be with that Lafleur guy you saw earlier. You know anything about it? Uh, no, Holmes. That is weird. 
but oops, <laughs> such a klutz. Yeah, tell me about it. Hey, you guys went ahead and had scripture study without me? Hey, don't sweat it, man. We're just getting started. All right, wait. I'll be right back. I gotta get my sword. Man, it's chilly in here. Would you look at that? Someone left the window open. Great, Miguel is back. Let's get started. Today, we're going to learn about Achan's sin, found in the book of Joshua, chapter 7. After my great ancestor Moshe died, the children of Joshua were being led by Yahushua, who's commonly called Joshua. Now, Yahushua was a great Hebrew warrior who trusted in Yahuwah. Sadly, the children of Yahshua lost a battle that they should have won against the people in the land of Ai. Yahushua and the elders of Yahshua were distressed about losing the battle and pleaded with Yahuwah, trying to understand what went wrong. And Yahuwah answered them. And Yahuwah said to Yahushua, Rise up, why are you lying on your face? Yahshua has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. And they have even taken some of that which is under the ban, and have both stolen and deceived, and also put it among their own goods. And the sons of Yashara shall not be able to stand before their enemies. They are going to turn their backs before their enemies, for they have become accursed. I am not with you anymore unless you destroy that which is under the ban from your midst. Early the next morning, it was revealed that Achan, the son of Karma, had stolen a Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels. Achan confessed that he coveted them and took them and hid them in the ground in the middle of his tent. At the end of Joshua chapter 7, we see that Yahushua and all of Yahshua with him took Achan and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his donkeys and his sheep and his tent and all that he had and they brought them to the valley of Achor. What happened next? And Yahushua said, why have you troubled us? Yahuwah troubles you today. Then all Yahshua stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones, which remains to this day. Then Yahuwah turned from the fierceness of his displeasure. Therefore, the name of that place has been called the Valley of Achor to this day. Much like Eve in the garden, we can see Achan's descent into sin and destruction. And it all started with the lust of the eyes. He saw those Babylonian goods, and he coveted after them. He then took them, and as a result, he got punished. Achan's failure should be a reminder to all of us how coveting and lusting after what doesn't belong to us can lead not only to our own destruction, but to the destruction of those around us as well. Stealing is never acceptable, whether it be a dollar or a million dollars. Yahuwah detests dishonest gain. Gi, you have managed to become even more useless than you already were. Incredible. More bad news. I saw the kid take the diamond out of the box and put it in his coat. Well now, we have no choice. We have to act fast before the coppers come to find us. We must grab the kid. We have wasted far too much time up here. I'm not hurting a kid. No, 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 no. You idiot. We grab the kid. Get the diamond and let him go. Hey, what's happening, Miguel? Hey, you know how to snowboard? Yeah, you know I'm originally from Cali, and it's not that different from surfing. <coughs> oh man, look at that! Gnarly! It's like you teleported or something! Whoa! Did you see that? I had to go to the bathroom. What did I miss? Now you be sure to come back with that diamond. Don't worry. 
I got this. Watch out! Ha! I gotcha! Hey! Let go of me! Uh, ch ch tree Ah! Oh! Hey Miguel, everything okay? You look kinda freaked out. No, it's all cool, Holmes. <laughs> danger! Danger! Avalanche! You want to be on fire for the most high, you gotta open up his word. I don't understand. He just broke in pieces? And he didn't even get hurt. Enough is enough. Time for Pepe Le Fleur to hit the slopes. Get out of my way! Give me back my diamond! Oh no! Look! Uh, yeah, uh, Holmes, I think I'm gonna go back to the chalet. I'm getting kinda tired. Already? Hey, Essie, you awake? Uh, I am now. Yeah, I was looking at Exodus chapter 20. Do you know? Uh, the Ten Commandments. It's interesting how not stealing, lying, and coveting are all one after the other. Yes, that's because all the commandments are interconnected. When you break one, you break them all. You know what's also interesting? Is there was a lot of strange activity on those slopes today. Almost seemed like you were being stalked out there, doesn't it? Isaac, I have to fess up. I need to show you something, Holmes. I found this gray box at the rest stop, and I took it up. Then I looked inside of it, and this is what was inside. All I could think was how this is the answer to my family's problems. Isaac, please don't tell anyone, but my mom and pops, they're struggling to pay the bills. Our house is in foreclosure. When that man came around asking for the box, I felt so conflicted. Part of me wanted to give it back, you know? And part of me was like finders keepers. Then we had that study about Aiken and coveting and how it brought him and his family destruction. And I see how this diamond brought trouble to me and my friends. So what are you gonna do? I'm gonna give it back. I'll do it in the morning. I think they are staying in that cottage behind the chalet. You're doing the right thing, Miguel. Yahuwah will make a way for your family. Hey, why does everyone look so glum? It's awful, Isaac, look! Once again, this is Cindy Wong reporting for GNN News. The elusive jewel thieves are suspected to be hiding out near the Crystal Chalet Resort. Helicopter wreckage was found near the chalet, but the jewel thieves were nowhere to be found. Authorities are closing in on this group of robbers. Here are all mugshots of the gang. The ringleader is Pepe Lafleur. His accomplices Bentley Brousseau and his cousin Guy Lafleur, not to be mistaken with the hockey legend by the same name. 
These men stole this diamond, value at $10 million, from the museum. If you see any of these men, do not approach them. They are considered armed and dangerous. They're calling everyone in, off the slopes. Oh no, I have to stop Miguel. Hey, Officer Gaines, it's Isaac. I know the whereabouts of those jewel thieves. All these months of planning. Just to be foiled by some foolish kids. Ah, cause? Silence! I don't even want to hear anything from you. Cause you need to look at this. You are a complete imbecile! A waste of space! Fermi Labus! Look! I'm flying through the sky! <laughs> uh, he's really flying! Yes? Can I help you? Um, good morning, sir. Uh, my name is Miguel. I think I have something that belongs to you. I'm sorry. Don't apologize to them, Miguel. Isaac? But I thought... Before you stole the diamond, they had already stolen it from the museum. Como? Turns out that the diamond has been stolen. Mr. Lafleur is not a jewel connoisseur. He and his gang are jewel thieves! And I'll take it back, Sir Dublin. <laughs> and I'm not only taking back the diamond, but I'm taking your length as well. Slow your roar, Pepe. Drop the gun and give me the diamond. I'm tired of just being the sidekick, tired of your idiot cousin, and most of all, tired of your terrible fashion sense. How many times must I tell you? I got this from the fashion district of Paris. The scriptures are so true, whoever is the partner of a thief hates his own soul. All of you, Ben and Bush. Now, this is the kind of ice I like. I'll be the toast of Paris when I get back to France. Now, there's four of you, and I have four bullets in this gun. Sir, uh, Mr. Bentley, there's something you need to know before you shoot us. Yeah? What's that? I got some more ice for you. Huh? Ah! D! Got the diamond! D! You hear me? Okay, welcome to the Juan and Jesus show. Today we're going to teach you how to build a, a chair. Incredible! Your flower has wilted, Lafleur. Officer Gaines, your timing is impeccable. Miguel, I want you to know, you're like a diamond in the rough. Why do you say that? Well, because unlike those hardened criminals, you tried to do the right thing. You tried to make a wrong right. Oh, thanks, Isaac, but still doesn't change my family's situation. Miguel, what are diamonds mined out of? Out of rock. Right. So if you allow Yahushua, the Messiah, to be the rock in your life, trust me. He will make a way for you and your family. Yes, me I tell you. The university are here yet. The bit in a comb are here, me said, them co broke the comb in our head. The pit the head too tough, me of this, I that me I say. What? I want it again. Lord, it looks like that big old red rat come back again, you know. Me I forgot pest control, me of this. What, Isaac? Hey, Danny. Glad to see you're feeling better. Yeah, man. My mother, chicken soup, clean me up good. So tell me about the trip. Me never miss anything special, right? What did you say? Come like one big snooze fest. Well, actually... 
Hey y'all, we ain't done. Now it's time for our epilogue. The closest Pepe and his gang would get to France is the moldy croissants in the prison cafeteria. Speaking of prison, with the help of Yahuwah, Kyle had the courage to stand up to his older brother and defend the gospel. Turns out because Miguel tried to do the right thing and return the diamond, him and his family got some public attention and the mayor of New York helped them to save their home. And as for Danny's mom, she stopped gossiping. Well, <laughs> with a little help, that is. Yes, may I tell you, our shirt had a big hole in it. You never did see it. Never see the hole. What is again, man? What? what? The rat come back again and jump in on my fridge. Me have this, me forgot. Wait, how are this? One message dip on the fridge. Stop gossiping. Lord, me sorry. Me sorry, Lord. Oh, no. Forgive me. Forgive me, please. Here and now. Much better.